Hey folks, welcome back to Jump Cloud's continuing whiteboard series. I'm Greg Keller, I'm the company's chief product officer, and today we'll be speaking about our product's G Suite integration and the multiple ways that you can better secure and manage your G Suite. Today, um, we'll talk about effectively two specific ways that Jump Cloud integrates with G Suite. Number one, through our direct integration bridge, which provides user account provisioning, password updating, uh, and metadata changes. And number two, we'll talk about an ancillary uh, integration through our SAML uh, for single sign-on purposes. So the best way to get started is to bring out our trusty pen and let's walk you through some of the conceptual architectures of how our integration bridge works. So first and foremost, we will start as always in the as we've done in the other whiteboard presentations with Jump Cloud. This will, this box obviously is Jump Cloud's directory as a service. It's where you're managing your core user accounts, credentials, all the stuff that you know very well what Jump Cloud does at its core. Um, in addition to the various systems that we manage or networks through Radius or LDAP endpoints, we also have both G Suite and Office 365 native integrations. We'll start with G Suite today and in another uh, whiteboard presentation, we'll talk about Office 365, which ends up being actually very similar, if not analogous, to how we manage our G Suite infrastructure and, and integration. So this box, Jump Cloud, our directory as a service. This box, we are going to denote, in fact, not even as G Suite, but Google, we'll just say Google Cloud Identity. So the interesting release, um, actually this is a fairly recent release by Google, was to in, in effect detach a Google user's identity from the services that, that the identity can uh, sort of incorporate. For example, in prior versions of Google, G Suite, you would buy the G Suite product and you would build user accounts. They're sort of tightly integrated with Gmail or with Calendar or with Drive. Recently, Google has, again, detached those two concepts. One, to create a core central identity. That's the one that we manage. And then you, as a G Suite administrator, will, in effect, choose the different services that you want to bind to that identity. We'll talk about that in a second. So first and foremost, um, let's begin right here with these two simple boxes. From the beginning, uh, uh, when you are in uh, integrating Jump Cloud with Google Cloud Identity, it's very simple. Inside of the administrative portal, there is a directories tab, and you will effectively use a super admin set of credentials via OAuth to maintain a persisted direct connection with G Suite. On the other side, within G Suite, within your security settings, you're going to, in effect, the only thing you need to do is enable the API inside. Again, you'll see this in the, in the um, admin portal for G Suite. Inside of security, there's a checkbox, enable API. And that's all we need in order to submit our instructions to tell Google that there is an authoritative identity management system that will be controlling the user accounts within uh, G Suite. So now, Let's assume um, you have this direct connection, all right? And again, this is being done directly through a very secure API through OAuth, as mentioned. But one thing I want to note is in different types of directory scenarios, typically an Active Directory or an LDAP, if you replace Jump Cloud in this architecture with AD or LDAP, in the past, you would require something um, called GADS. There's a new name for it, Google Cloud Identity Sync, I think it's called, but in traditionally it was called Google Apps Directory Sync. And this was a, a, an installed piece of software. In fact, it still exists. It is a self-hosted, self-installed, self-managed piece of software that in effect would proxy what we are doing without any sort of server installation. This means that what we elimin have eliminated here uh, is this necessity, so to speak, of another server that has two integration endpoints, one to your Active Director or LDAP, and the other, of course, to Google. This is a Google product. So I just want to make that clear. In our relationship, 
you don't need any sort of middle tier server um, or middleware in order to sort of transact between us. All right, so no GADs. So with the API set up and Google now understanding that it's going to defer password changes and other changes to, uh, to a directory, JumpCloud in this case, you'll go about life as normal. Either in the first use case, you will build a user account inside of JumpCloud. You will elect to have that user account be provisioned over into Google. So this is user A, and through the JumpCloud administrative uh, uh, interface, either using our groups system or individually on the user, you can say, JumpCloud, provision this user account over into G Suite. Great, that's great. But what happens if you've already got a whole slew of G Suite users, hundreds if not thousands of them? We do the same thing in reverse, which is here you have user B, and our API integration not only does provisioning, but importation as well. So you are allowed to import those particular users. So now you have a constant synced record between your two quote directories, your master authoritative directory, JumpCloud, and then the Google Cloud identity directory underpinning things like G Suite. As mentioned, once your, uh, the cloud identities are sort of input and laid in place within G Suite, it's up to you as the G Suite administrator to assign them to things like to G Suite itself, right? So you give them things like Gmail, uh, like Drive, uh, you know, like Calendar, and so on, right? But there's other things too. For example, let's say you have other applications that uh, exist that are signing in through OAuth, or better yet, log in with Google, log in with your Google creds. Here's the cool part. This whole chain of events means that JumpCloud is really the backing authority of that password check. So way out here on the edge, when your user is signing in to some you know, third party application with their Google credentials, we're literally doing a pass through in real time. So in this particular use case, JumpCloud all the way through the Google identity and out to its various services, JumpCloud is really owning that password infrastructure. Um, and it just basically ensures that one-click deprovisioning or unbinding in this particular use case will submit down the chain an inability for that Google identity to connect to anything or authenticate. So that's a, uh, um, obviously a very powerful thing in, in that regard. Obviously, G Suite is one of the Google-owned endpoints. Another is you know GCP or the Google Cloud, meaning Google identities in the cloud to manage their cloud infrastructure. Um, we work in concert with that as well, um, but you get the picture, right? One other thing to note here is all metadata changes. That could be for perhaps once you have declared that JumpCloud will be the master version of these identities, metadata changes like changing you know, username A to username A.1 will instantly be synced over into uh, G Suite and all the other endpoints, including you know, their Gmail account, everywhere where the name is reflected, we will own an update, of course, but obviously the password too. So in this case, this password is communicated via hash over into G Suite. Um, and we are the ones who own and push the password changes into Google. Note that Google does not, through its API, push out password hashes. They don't, they, this is exactly why they do OAuth and sign in with Google. Uh, in our world, we can't receive, nor can anyone receive, any direct, uh, obviously not even clear text, but any password representation out of Google. That's why we're the authoritative directory. We own the secure relationship between our two quote directories, and we are the ones pushing that critical password hash into that service. So a couple of other things I mentioned. So this, this is the first sort of foundational part of JumpCloud's relationship with Google. Um, now there's another part. Uh, if you consider this box the directory, uh, consider this box the JumpCloud user portal. This is where your employees will go 
in order to uh, change their you know, information. Uh, one of the most critical pieces of information that they'll change is their password, right? So they'll make password changes, that gets input into JumpCloud and instantly, as mentioned, within a, you know, a nanosecond, the password hash gets pu pushed into G Suite. But the user portal also services the second part of our integration with Google, and that is um, SAML-based SSO. When the user logs into their portal, and if they have access or their administrator has uh, set up SSO uh, and assign that user to authenticate via SAML SSO into G Suite, they will have the G Suite button inside of their JumpCloud user portal. When they click on that, then of course they do the SAML assertion into G Suite in order to provide them access in, in, uh, to basically get into their G Suite uh, account and see their calendar and get their Gmail and so on and so forth. I want to make something very clear here also. Um, these two particular integrations, the provisioning integration, the foundational part, and SAML can be used independently of one another. You can use our provisioning and not use SAML-based SSO and everything's fine. The user just goes to gmail.com, logs in with their corporate email and their GemCloud password, and it's a seamless user experience, just like you and me do probably from our home Gmail accounts. Same exact experience. Other organizations want to have a very, um, if not more tightly controlled experience utilizing SSO so that they drive their users to some authenticated dashboard, which often has MFA uh, associated, Jump Cloud's MFA associated with it, uh, in order to two-factor in, they click the G Suite button and get asserted into their G Suite session. So one other point to make about the G Suite specific two-factor authentication is JumpCloud allows you to use that as well. We don't uh, sort of block the use of G Suite's own built-in two-factor simply by the virtue of you perhaps using JumpCloud's two-factor from the user portal. It's entirely up to you uh, if you'd like to continue using G Suite's multi-factor authentication. So that's it. What we wanted to do today was effectively teach you about the, the two integration points we have with G Suite. The first, as mentioned, is our API-driven integration bridge for user account provisioning and password updating. The second is our SAML-based SSO. And again, as mentioned, these are two independent pieces of functionality that work against G Suite. But interestingly, you don't have to use them both at the same time. Feel free to use our SAML-based integration uh, with our provisioning bridge or use one or the other. It's entirely flexible and up to you. That's it. We thank you for coming once again to see us during these whiteboard presentations and we look forward to giving you more. Thanks again.